Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So, we finished Goron Link's face since uh, last session. Now I'm going to be working on uh, the main Link in the center, in his original form. So, yeah, really excited with the progress I'm making here. We're at 42%. Over 42, like 42.3. Yeah, this one is coming right along very quickly. Okay, I'm thinking, starting with this stitch here. Rather than have a really long carry across the back, I'm just going to use a short piece to do that stitch as I have one available. If I didn't have any leftover pieces, then I probably would have just started with a long piece and carried it over sort of to the top of that, that uh, line of stitches there. But since I do have a small piece left over, yeah. Yeah, so we heard from the school, and uh, it's a competitive gaming, like, uh, league or club or whatever. So my son is going to try out later this week. There was a total of uh, five games, and he's going to try out for the um, Mario Smash Brothers and uh, Mario Kart, because uh, he's played those before, so he, he's used to them. And uh, there was some others, but he hasn't played them played them yet. So, yeah, we don't have the uh, Mario Smash Brothers game ourselves, but he's played it because um, sometimes he goes to our local youth center and they have they have a copy there. So, and of course, it's funny because he uh, he uh, created his avatar and named it Rick Astley because he's obsessed with Rick Rolling. So. <laughs> Such a goofball. Uh, yeah, as soon as I saw it on the screen, I'm like, oh, that must be yours, huh? <laughs> uh. Yeah, it was funny. He got his uh, his dad the other day. He texted him the lyrics, but um, he, my husband was driving, and so he didn't look at his phone. He had, you know, the computer was saying, oh, incoming text, you know, and do you want to hear it he says yes and then it's like a computer voice never going to give you up never going to let you down <laughs> like with no inflection <laughs> oh you know he took it because he it said who it was from and he thought it might be an emergency and then yeah no it was not <laughs> oh. yeah it's funny i only played the mario smash brothers maybe once because we were visiting family and they had it and uh my husband chose to be Link <laughs> for his character, and I chose Kirby, and then I kept on on uh, eating him <laughs> with the Kirby. Yeah, he's like, stop eating me. And then after Kirby had uh, swallowed him enough times, he, um, he had Link's hat. He stole it, so <laughs> yeah, it was quite funny. Okay, so I think I'm going to end up with a couple of threads here because these kind of go in different directions so but I happen to know I have a lot of small pieces of this color so I will be able to find a small one to do those two sort of on their own oh actually I don't need to park this just yet because it is oh actually thinking I could ah you know what I will not have to add another thread there's a way I can do this with just one. So I will. Yeah, I didn't sleep so good last night because I forgot to take my sleeping medication, silly me, until like an hour after I couldn't sleep. And I thought to myself, wait, did I take it? And no, I hadn't. I honestly thought I had, but 
This is why I don't just keep mine in the pill bottles. I actually put them in the days of the week package because yeah, otherwise I cannot remember whether I actually took my medication or just think I took my medication. <laughs> Ugh. I actually saw a product you could buy that um, was a pill bottle that would tell you the last time that it had been opened, which is definitely useful for people who yeah, have trouble remembering if they did it or not. Yeah, occasionally there's been times when I actually had to count how many pills were left in the container to see if I'd taken one or not, but yeah. Ugh. But then the problem was if you forgot one a few days ago, then you will still have an extra, which means you could potentially take more than your dose and you don't want to do that, so yeah. Okay, this piece should be just long enough to do these four. And then it'll be time to switch colors anyway. So we'll tie it off. Paper's kind of in my way. There we go. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah, I really don't like when it's tickling my fingers. Or occasionally if I have the fabric kind of um, folded in a way that it rubs against my hand while I'm stitching, I have uh, some fingerless gloves I wear so that it, it rubs on the glove and not on my skin because that just drives me up the wall. Uh. Yeah, I tried buying some of those um, compression crafter gloves, but I don't really need them yet for pain. I don't have arthritic pain, thankfully, knock on wood. And uh, yeah, so they were too tight, I found. And since I didn't need the compression, I just went with regular gloves. Yeah, there's more blue on this hat of lynx than you might expect, but that's the shadow. Okay, just sorting through my leftover bits here. I think we'll start a new one. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> yeah, there's a bit more of color block in this area, so we'll see how much we get done this session. Yeah. Stuff's going more vertical. Oops. <laughs> yeah, there. I don't want to be putting the loop through my needle. I want to put the ends through. Okay. saying about kiddo trying out for the Mario Kart because, uh, yeah, he kicks uh, mine and his dad's butt regularly. <laughs> it took me like two years before I managed to beat him one time and on one track, not on the actual whole, you know, cup of four races. No, just on one out of the four. So he still beat me. <laughs> it was just that one time. <laughs> uh, yeah, he likes to be either Yoshi or... um. Isabel from Animal Crossing. It was funny too because we had friends over and uh, their daughter who's, they're very close in age. I think they're about not even a year apart. So they were playing on the uh, Switch and they were both Isabel. <laughs> yeah, they were playing the team event where you, you have the balloons on your... Uh, 
vehicle and you have to try and pop the other people's balloons while keeping your balloons from getting popped. Yeah. Ugh. I find that one even harder than the racing. There's just so many, you know, turning around quick turns and I can't, even looking at the map, it's hard to figure out where someone is. And by the time I realize where they are to try to pop their balloon, they're already gone again. <laughs> so, yeah. <coughs> well, I find a lot of 3D games could be really tough. Like, um, the Mario 64 because you can't control the camera as easily. It kind of, it goes where it wants to. And uh, yeah, I found that really frustrating sometimes. There was um, one level where you were, there was a cage you had to get into and you had to ride um, like sort of a platform down, jump on the other platform, come back in. But the problem was when you jumped from one platform to the other, the camera spun around, so you ended up going in the wrong direction. And uh, yeah, you could tell yourself, okay, go opposite, go mirror image all you want, but it's not that easy to to actually do, you know. Your brain doesn't want to compute it properly, so. Oh, goodness, pardon me. <clears throat> Yeah, the direction changing tricks your tricks your brain. <laughs> that was one reason I liked um, the way the camera worked in the N sixty four Legend of Zelda games because if you press the was it the Z button, the camera would immediately center to behind Link. So yeah, that made it. Uh, if you weren't targeting like an enemy or something, yeah, then the camera would just automatically go behind you, which made it easier to, uh, yeah, to see. And you could, you know, um, go into first person camera and look around and stuff too. Yeah. So I really liked how they, how they programmed that made it a lot easier. Although I still got mixed up sometimes. I remember when I was doing the um, the forest temple in Ocarina of Time, I ended up casting a warp point that would go to the front door of the temple so I could remember which directions I'd gone in because you had the four directions you had to go to um, get the flames back to light the torches after the, um, the ghost sisters stole them. And yeah, I kept on going the wrong way because I had a hard time telling sort of where I'd come out of and where the next door to go was. So that sort of gave me a north point to, uh, yeah, to navigate from. Yeah, apparently the ghost sisters are named after the uh, sisters from Little Women. That was another Luigi Brothers uh, tidbit. I was like, I can't believe I didn't even notice, you know. <laughs> and apparently their laugh is um, Ganon's laugh sped up three times. So his, you know, hoo, 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 hoo. and then it's, yeah spit up until it's their funny sounding little little laugh which is cool yeah people saying complained about the water temple but i actually found the forest temple harder i found i mixed up the uh the directions more easily and it took me a long time to figure out that so i figured out how to untwist the hallway to go somewhere else but i didn't realize you had to actually retwist it later to go somewhere else. Yeah, that one took me quite a while. I think actually my uh, my husband had to help me <laughs> with that one. Yeah, and he said, well, did you retwist the hallway? And I'm like, you're supposed to do that? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna do this one here because that way I can do the uh, 
stitch below it without closing anything in. And then that way when I do the next row, I can sort of go like this and down without, again, skipping any, any squares. So sometimes, yeah, with the way I stitch, I sort of stair step along the, uh, the diagonal edge there. It's just the way it works out for me. Yeah, this one is kind of a really steep diagonal because the colors just kind of went in that direction. So yeah, I kind of cut it off where Goron Link is and left this link for after I moved the frame. Okay, I'm going to park this right here so I can do these two stitches here with the same piece of thread and not have to add another. So yeah, I kind of split up the... Uh, the color a bit sometimes so that I don't have to add extra threads and I also don't do the stitches out of order. It's funny because uh, they were saying for the games he could join chess club or he could join you know gaming club I'm like oh well gaming club is definitely going to be what he wants i don't think he's ever played chess <clears throat> my dad loves chess but uh yeah i am no good at it I'm trying to think ahead in that many scenarios oh i don't like it it's it's too much of a slow paced game for my liking and yeah, just way too many possibilities trying to hold in my head at once. I'm not good at that, so. Yeah, I, I've tried it a few times, but I don't think it will ever be my game. You know, give me a cribbage board I like that game. You know, it's much quicker. And uh, you don't have to really think that's far ahead. You're only thinking one hand at a time, you know. Okay, so yeah, I think I actually won't have as much green here yet because I'm pretty sure we get to Link's hair and his face coming up. I think the cutoff you can actually, yeah, there was a little bit of his hair sort of a few diagonals over peeking out from the under the brim of his hat there so yeah we'll get more green on the other side after we've done more of his face So then I did that so that I can do these ones hugging that edge all at once and not close it in. interesting in the Legend of Zelda games it's still the same basic storyline generally but it uh, doesn't matter we enjoyed it anyway right still you and Princess Zelda have to defeat the evil Ganon <clears throat> Yeah, 
Yeah, in Breath of the Wild, we found it tough with those um, the guardians, the little ones that can creep around. And um, there's one way you can um, defeat them is with a shield parry, where once they shoot their, um, their beam out at you, you have to time it just right and put your shield out, and it knocks the beam of energy back towards the guardian and destroys them. But it's really tough. Yeah, because if you don't time it exactly perfect, it uh, instead, you know, knocks you down. And if you don't have very many hearts, then yeah, you're toast, so. Yeah, it was funny too. They said to get into the uh, the thieves' hideout in Breath of the Wild, you have to dress as one of them. And then when you uh, you put it on, and the guy says, "Oh, look at you! You're so pretty!" And then Lake's all looking shy. <laughs> it's pretty cute. <laughs> okay, just trying to decide what I want to do next. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to split this up. So I could have started this end and then carried on here, but I can see I would have to do some stuff out of order because of the way this color is shaped. And so instead, I'm just going to start the end stitch right here and carry on. And I'll use a smaller piece for the other side. That way I didn't do stuff out of order. And it was a longer carry, too, if I had started it further over to the right, so... I gotta cut it off somewhere, right? So that's why I decided to cut it off there. Oh my gosh. There we go. Yeah, kind of like in the um, the Wind Waker, the world is flooded, so you have little islands and stuff. And um, the legend sort of is remembered from previous days because there's uh, one where uh, one of the fish tells Link, oh yeah, you go over there, you can find the Triumph Forks. And it took forever for us to like, what's the Triumph Forks? Until we realized it was a Triforce, but said wrong because the, the truth of it had been kind of lost to legend. So, yeah, it wasn't until we got to the end of the game and I suddenly went, oh, Triumph Forks, Triforce, right? Hmm. Okay, 413. Oh, pardon me. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. Yeah, hard to believe it's going to be the ready time change soon, which I am not a fan of. Yeah, I've heard supposedly that there's a lot of states getting rid of it in the U.S. and that Canada may follow suit so that the uh, time zone remains consistent, which I really hope so. And I've had some saying you don't want to go to standard time, you want to stay on daylight saving time year round. And I'm just like, I don't care, but let's just pick one and stick with it. Because, yeah, I'm not a fan of this messing with the clocks. You know, they tell you to uh, keep a consistent sleep schedule if you have insomnia. And then it's like, well, twice a year you can't do that anyway because they're messing with the clock. Yeah, and I mentioned this once on a forum. Someone's like, well, just go to bed earlier. It's like, dude, you clearly have never had insomnia. Going to bed earlier makes it worse. There's a difference between being tired and being drowsy. And if you try to go to bed when you're just tired but not drowsy, you're often awake even longer. Yeah. 
I just kind of rolled my eyes and let it go because there wasn't a point. But I really wanted to be like, wow, thanks, buddy, you know. Thanks, I never would have thought of doing that myself. You've really cracked that, uh, you know, that mystery wide open. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Ugh. I've had insomnia since as long as I can remember, even as a kid. So, unfortunately, it's just not going away anytime soon. My brain is too noisy. Oh, and I often get this, I'm like getting drowsy and I'm almost falling asleep. And then, you know, my brain will be like, hey, guess what? You're almost asleep, which means, well, now I'm not anymore. <laughs> oh, now I'm awake again. Because the realization that I was almost asleep woke me up. Oh, dear. Okay, so I'm going to park that because that's out of the diagonal now. Oops. And I will get back to it later. All right, so we're going to head back over to the left-hand side again and work my way back out to the right. Yeah, so uh, my husband had to order a new radiator for his um, Unimog that he's rebuilding. And when the package arrived, it had these big warning labels on it of, you know, cancer causing and reproductive harm and stuff. And I said, you know, what is in this? Is it like coolant or something? He said, oh, no, it's just the um, the physical piece of it. It's because it's like aluminum and it came from a state where they were required to put those warnings on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think when they go overboard with the warnings, they kind of lose their meaning, you know? Uh, but I mean, I guess they have to because if they don't and somebody, you know, does something dangerous with it, which common sense would tell you not to do, but, you know, common sense is not always that common, then they get sued, so they have to cover their behinds. Ugh. Yeah, there was supposedly someone told me of a case where oh, what, people sued because they put their car on cruise control or their RV and went, wanted to go into the back to like make a sandwich. And it's like, it's cruise control, not autopilot. And because it didn't say you couldn't do that, you know. Uh -huh. I can't remember the outcome of that case, but yeah. this color again. Or actually, I'm just going to do these. I'm going to park it. Move some other colors around it. We'll see if this is long enough to do all of these. I think we'll just be able to get it without having to add another thread, but we'll see. So I think the um, the horizontal halfway point is like right, a couple of uh, more spaces over, like right in the center of the center links hat. So yeah, we're getting there. Of course, because it's diagonally stitched, when we get to there, it won't exactly be 50% till we're a few more diagonals over, but... That's a nice thing with the pattern keeper does all that calculation for you. Yeah, I never really used to, I used to go by page and 
would just sort of guesstimate, you know, if there were 30 odd pages, then when you got to, you know, 15, 16, that meant you were about halfway through. But even then, sometimes the pages are not always the same size. You know, sometimes you'd end up with a, a smaller strip at the end or at the bottom. So, yeah, it's really nice to have Pattern Keeper do that math for you. I never used to keep track of how many stitches I did per day either, especially because um, before I had Pattern Keeper, I stitched cross country, so it was even harder to keep track. You know, when you stitch with this parking, you can sort of tell when you've done a whole square kind of thing, but uh, yeah. Yeah, if I had to do extra work, I wouldn't want to keep track, but since the app does pretty much all that work for me, I don't mind. <laughs> Because, yeah, some people like to have, um, you know, stitching challenges throughout the month and stuff to motivate them. But then I find if I do that, I just get stressed out about not making my goal. And then it's kind of zaps the fun out of it. And I want this to be enjoyable. This is a hobby. So. Yeah, just like I have similar with my um, reading challenge per year. I kind of lowball it a bit because that way if I fall behind, I don't get too stressed out. So, yeah. So I now these last few years have put my goal to a book a week. I usually read more than that, like one and a half kind of thing. But that way, if I go through a phase where I don't really have time to read or something, then I won't fall behind. And usually... I finish my challenge by early December and then everything else is just bonus. So yeah, I used to read a lot more. I used to read like three books a week, but gee, actually I think I can just reach across with this one and do this last stitch up here too. Haha. -ha. So anyway, a bit of a longer carry, but it worked out because I still didn't close anything in this time. So that is what I will do. Yeah, I have friends who are, you know, they read like 300 a year. It's like, man, I miss being able to do that when I was uh, a kid. Yeah. I would just devour books, but I don't really have the brain capacity to do that anymore like I used to. Okay, 30, 51. Yeah, it was a meme I shared once, which was, uh, you know, Elle from Legally Blonde. And everyone's like, my friends, you read that book in one day? And then what? Like, it's hard? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> or it was like, uh. Yeah, somebody said their dad was saying, you know, I don't understand why you binge watch TV shows. You know, you wouldn't read a book in one sitting. It's like, oh, that's not how you're supposed to read them. <laughs> yeah, we've gotten kind of spoiled because um, we do watch some shows that are, you know, not finished and not on streaming. And so, yeah. And you have to, and I say, oh, I guess we got to wait till next week. And my husband, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, watching, um, we were watching Leverage uh, Redemption last night. And usually, usually each episode is self-contained. You know, there might be some continuing story arcs, but each, each story is kind of self-contained. There's a resolution. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, this time they, uh, they made a two-parter at least, so we'll have to wait till next week to see how it ends. Ooh, ooh, pardon me. Mm -mm. I want to be 
triangle stitches here. Oh, okay, this one is short. Yeah. Let's see if that other thread I attached was longer or if we're gonna be attaching yet another one once this one is done. So I'm gonna do these three stitches here. So I waited on this one so that I could do all those four at once. Hundred. Woohoo. Yeah, so speaking of binge watching, I've been watching the stars um, show Spartacus. Yeah, I kind of had to take a break because it's pretty intense. <laughs> and uh, there was a lot of gore, I gotta say. The other thing that kind of annoys me is, um, well, they said they wanted to do it kind of like it was a graphic novel style. So they use a lot of extreme slow motion shots and I personally find it extremely distracting. Like every once in a while, a slow motion shot can really add punch to, you know, a scene, but when you overuse it, it, yeah, it really gets under my skin. I, I say it's kind of like highlighting an entire page. If you highlight the whole page, nothing is highlighted, right? You know, nothing stands out anymore. Or if you put an exclamation point at the end of every sentence, it, it loses its impact. And that's how I feel. It's like, because some of the fight scenes, they'll have, they'll literally have a slow motion shot every five to 10 seconds. And I just, I mean, I get that's a style a lot of people like, but yeah, for me, I just, it starts to get really irritating, at least for my personal taste. <clears throat> 
you know, it's kind of one of those, you couldn't turn it into like a, a workout game or something because you collapse of exhaustion. <laughs> Cause yeah, I saw one they had for like, um, uh, while watching the a and &E version of um, Pride and Prejudice and it had, you know, every time Darcy looks annoyed, you know, do five push-ups or whatever. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you'd be really fit by the time it, uh, it's over if you do that because yeah, he looks annoyed a lot. <laughs> and so I said the same thing would be like, if you're watching this and every time they did a slow motion shot, you had to do like, you know, five sit-ups or jumping jacks or something, you'd never stop moving. Oh. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, because I in, I've enjoyed a lot of Star's uh, historical dramas, even though I recognize that they take plenty of liberty with it, you know. It's not a, it's definitely not a history lesson, you know, but uh, I enjoyed it anyway, but the other ones didn't do this constant slow motion shot thing. I guess because they weren't trying to make it look like graphic novel style, so. But yeah, it, uh, I'm enjoying it except for that kind of gets on my nerves after a while. Because I remember they did it like once in Smallville where there was one and it was sort of showing flashes of, you know, Clark going across the room and catching the bullet in his hand and it shows the bullet in his hand and then it, and it sort of did like this flash like it was different slides almost. And then my husband says, oh, it's like, it's like panels in a comic book. And I was like, oh, that was so cool because they only did it the one time, like in the whole series, for like 10 seconds in one episode. So for me, I really enjoyed that because it wasn't overdone at all. It, uh, yeah, it really had an impact. I'm one of those people who says, I don't think the camera should bring attention to itself. You know, for me, at least for me, it kind of destroys my immersive experience if it reminds me that I'm looking through a camera, you know. There's some times where they can do it and it works really well. Uh, but as a general rule, like there was one time I remember um, on NCIS and they were doing an episode about jetpacks. And so they had one shot where McGee was on the um, elevator and he sort of pretends he's driving a jetpack. And so he sort of pretends he turns the, um, the controls on and then the elevator whips upwards so that you know the camera drops down like as if he took off in a jetpack and that was pretty cool yeah but again it does it wasn't done a lot it was just done that one time or um when i watched atonement they had that famous long uninterrupted shot that goes around like sort of the whole um evacuation of dunkirk yeah it starts sort of on one and it loops all the way around following the main character and then it kind of goes around a bunch of guys singing on the docks and then it goes into a bar and it's like a really amazing shot that lasts like, oh geez, I think three or four minutes. I'd have to look that up again. But um, yeah, it was uh, really amazing. Cause I, like they said, they had so many people in that scene, so many extras and they only got a chance to shoot it, you know, a few times until, because they would lose the light because it was outside, not on the sound stage. And so, uh, yeah, it was really amazing. But again, it was done one time. And it sort of took me till I was sort of almost through the entire shot that I went, wait a minute, is this one single shot that hasn't cut away? Yeah, so. But yeah, there was a few times, like I remember on Deep Space Nine, they let some guy direct who had never directed before. And so he decided to just have fun with the camera everywhere. And he did some really weird shots where, um, I think it was the first Mirror Universe episode where um, uh, Kira and Dr. Bashir end up going to the Mirror Universe. And they get like kidnapped on their, or somebody comes onto their, uh, their shuttlecraft. Yeah, that's right. And they did this really weird shot where it was like down low and it's almost going sort of like up the actor's nose kind of thing kind of shot and it was just like it was so distracting I found it really weird and then they did a shot of ops where they put the camera way 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 up so everybody practically looked like ants and it had never been done before and the director was you know brand new director was so proud of himself for getting this amazing shot no one had ever had and I was just like I found that so distracting 
because I'm trying to see the action and you're way, way out here and I can't see it. And it's just kind of, yeah. If I'm sitting there saying to myself, for Pete's sake, zoom in, I can't see what you're doing. I think you're not doing it right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being curmudgeonly, but that's my thing. <laughs> or the other one I said is how they, um, they have the lighting so dark on a lot of things for realism. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's irritating because it's like, okay, but I can't see what's happening. <laughs> like, yes, I recognize when people turn the lights off, it isn't, the room isn't illuminated by this, you know, pale bluish uh, glow, but at least I can see what's happening, you know? Like somebody said, the difference between the battle at Winterfell in Game of Thrones versus you know, the battle in two towers, which took place at night with rain, but because of the way they lit it, you could actually see what was happening in the Lord of the Rings movie. And I didn't find that it looked too unusual, even though with the bluish light, but it was like twilight, so it worked. But yeah, that was one thing that I was really annoyed about in Game of Thrones because, uh, you know, they build up the entire series to this battle and then you can't even see most of it. Ugh. Like, okay, maybe it's realistic, but I mean, come on. Who's watching Game of Thrones for realism, <laughs> right? It's fantasy. Ooh. Like, we're watching things about dragons, you know? I'm not watching it for realism. I'm watching it for entertainment. <laughs> But anyway, that's my rant for today. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I saw a meme that said the fun game to play with your friends is uh, the don't get me started game where somebody has to pick a random topic and another person has to like make up a rant about it as if it it's something that's really important to them and it can be ridiculous things, you know like whether bunny slippers should have ears kind of thing <laughs> like just yeah almost like I guess like an improv <laughs> yeah I was in drama class for a little while and we had to do the improv but I have to say I wasn't that good at it thinking up stuff on the spot yeah it's like I've had people say to me oh you're funny you should be a stand-up comic I'm like yeah but I can't just think of a routine I'm funny as in something happens and I think of something on the spot that's funny, but I can't, yeah, sit there and write a script out. I admire the people who do this, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a skill. Not everybody's got it. <laughs> So I have two threads here, but I think I'm going to do, yeah, just these three and tie it off. And then the other thread will do the other sort of flow of color, of course, once I fill in what's to the left of it. Yeah, thinking my uh, my diagonal will end about here, and then I'll probably go back up to the top. We'll see. As I often say, I stitch diagonal-ish and not a strict diagonal. 
Oh, actually, I'm going to do these two first because then I can do all those number two stitches in one go. So. I didn't really have to do it that way. I just saw an opportunity there, so. I will do it that way. the other way. Easier to bring it up in an emptier pool versus one that's filled. Okay, so then that way I can do all of these and tie off that thread. If it's long enough, of course. I didn't even check, so we'll see. It might not be might need to add another small piece. Let's see how far we can stretch this. again. Hard to come up in the bowl that has more threads in it. No, I think we have just enough here. Perfect. So yeah, sometimes I move top down, sometimes I move bottom up. Sometimes I kind of go sneak back and forth. Just depends on the colors. And which one I can stitch next without closing in an unstitched square. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like this one's going to branch off. See if the thread I've got parked, that's fairly long, so yeah. Eventually we're going to end up with two. This one here in the corner. And then I'm going to park. Oops. Without a knot, if I can manage that. There we go. And then I'm going to unthread it because I'm going to be heading upwards a bit more. 
Yeah, so let's see this because I saw it was this color. Yeah, which hugs that edge perfectly. dark background here between the, the two link hats, the Goron one and then the main one. A little bit of a gap there. Yeah, I forgot to mention this before, but congratulations to uh, Teresa Little Stitcher. She hit uh, 20,000 subscribers. So, yeah, that was really exciting. Yeah, she has some beautiful work. That's for sure. Yeah, I recommend checking her out. I'm subscribed to her. I like to watch her videos, so. getting into some greens here. On, uh, on this lynx hat here. Yeah, and then we'll be getting into his face and I think we'll get part of his hand holding the mask of truth up to his face. He's kind of peeking over it. this 
this stitch. Okay, 158, so as usual, I like to end on the even number, so I'm going to stitch these two here. I'll stop at 160, because I'm just weird like that. <laughs> I did say bigger blocks of color, but we didn't really get to those. Oh, that did not go down correctly. Yeah, it's going to be more sorted in the next diagonal. More bigger blocks of color as we get into Link's hair and face. Oh my gosh. There, that's better. Perfect. 160. Okay, so um, as usual, thanks so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone.